Hey guys, let's talk about this week's episode of Revenge, and it is the aftermath of Emily's shooting. And she's somewhere in the water, nobody knows where she is. There's news bulletins everywhere saying that she got shot on her boat going out for her honeymoon, and nobody knows what's going on. Of course, everyone thinks that Victoria is guilty, and that's pretty much how this episode plays out. It's sort of trying to unravel who could have possibly done this to Emily. And of course, Emily is found and she is in the hospital and she has amnesia. That's right. She has no idea who she is. And at first I was thinking, okay, well, maybe this is a plan that she's trying to pretend so that she doesn't give away the fact that she knows that Daniel is the one who shot her. But we quickly find out that, nope, she really does have amnesia because um, when Aiden goes to see her to take her out of the hospital, she's all freaked out and she's like, who are you? I don't know who you are, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, oh my God, she really does have amnesia. So of course, when she goes to tell, he goes to tell Nolan this, Nolan is freaking out because, you know, he doesn't want anybody finding out the truth, you know, with them not around. And one of the things that I thought was very interesting was they had her realize who her father was. So when Charlotte is sitting there with her talking, she's like, I can't believe you can't remember anything and you don't remember anybody. She's like, I remember my dad. And she's like, what's your dad's name? And he says, Daniel, um, no, sorry. She says, um, David, and um, of course, that's who uh, we all know to be David Clark. And David Clark is obviously Amanda's dad, not Emily's. So this kind of makes Charlotte go, what? And she runs to tell um, Jack, who then, of course, is trying to figure out well, how is he going to fix this? Because if they find out that she really is Emily, then everything is going to be a disaster. So he goes to the hospital to see Emily and hoping that this can trigger some memories, which it does. So, you know, he sits down, he has a quiet moment with her and he goes to, I think he gives her a kiss on the forehead or something. And he gives her the compass slash clock or something that he, she had given to him, which belonged to Amanda, which of course belonged to her, which he believed was Amanda's before she died off the boat last season. And this triggers a memory in her. And she says, Daniel. And he says, no, I'm not Daniel. I'm Jack. And she's like, no, Daniel is the one who shot me. So by the end of the episode, we find out that Emily starting to get her memory back, which is awesome. Because I don't want to see this amnesia storyline play out for too long. Now, will she continue to pretend that she has amnesia when she's around the Graysons? Probably. And she'll probably try to do whatever she can to continue this um, charade. But the problem is that Victoria is now aware that Emily was in her house years ago at that New Year's Eve party because Lydia showed her the picture. So she knows that Emily is up to no good and she's very much aware. And of course, Daniel knows that Emily is up to no good because he's the one who overheard the conversation on the boat, which is why he shot her in the first place. Now, the fact that Daniel shot her, I still am not thrilled about. And, you know, the fact that he was all distraught because Sarah tried to kill herself, I'm like, Ugh, whatever. I just, that, that storyline, I just don't really care about. Um, but of course, the Graysons will do anything for self-preservation. And so they once again tried to throw Lydia under the bus, making it seem like Lydia was the only one not present when Emily was shot. And that Emily, um, that Lydia is the one who actually shot Emily, which of course, Lydia is always the scapegoat. So I don't know why this woman keeps coming back for more, knowing that these this whole family will just throw her under the bus, whatever chance they have. So of course, Margot was still around and she's still trying to figure out what's going on with these Graysons and nobody cares. I mean, I don't really care. And then of course, um, um, Victoria's son came back and he is of course, once again, up to no good. And he is throwing Nolan under the bus. So he has talked to, to, to Victoria and he's pretty much letting her know that um, Nolan has a box in a safe behind a painting that he bought from Victoria's collection, I guess. And it has the infinity signal, um, signature on it. And of course, she puts two and two together that this is the same um, tattoo that Emily has on her wrist. So I'm sure that she is, you know, twisting the little stash on her fake face. And um, she's going to try to come up with a plan as to how to get that box. And we all know what's in that box is a lot of information going back to David Clark and all the pieces to the puzzle that she is trying to 
put together to take down the Graysons. So it should be very interesting to see what happens coming up. Like I said, the show has definitely turned back to being this soapy goodness that we really enjoy. So I'm very excited to see what happens. And then we got the introduction of some new girl who knows Aiden and, of course, apparently is still in love with him. I don't know. She kisses him passionately. And that's going to obviously throw a wrench into the Emily Aiden living happily ever after plan, which is fine with me. I mean, I don't mind Aiden, but ultimately we all know that her and Jack are the two that need to end up together happily ever after. And I'm sure that they made him be the connection that brings her back from her amnesia state because ultimately he is like her anchor. He is the one who brings all of her happy memories back. And, you know, there, it, it, it was going to take a lot for him to forgive Emily for all the lies and the, the betrayal that she's done to him over the years. So I'm sure that this is going to be a step in that direction. And I'm fine with that. So I didn't mind this episode. It was a good one coming back after the holidays. And I can't wait to see what happens this week. All right, guys, that has been my review of Revenge. I'll see you next week. Bye.